great. Sorry for the delay. Um, I am Hannah Dormido. I am a graphics reporter and cartographer at the Washington Post. Um, so today I'm going to walk you through examples of how we use OpenStreetMap data for news mapping. <laughs> and wish me luck. Um, hang on. So a little about me first. I'm a full-time cartographer and journalist at the Post. Um, I've lived a few days before I got to this point. I was um, working for a magazine out of college. Um, I came from journalism school. I did produce for TV for a while. And then I don't know what happened, but I started doing data viz in 2012 and learned on the job at the Financial Times. Started learning cartography on YouTube and just like went from there. And then I worked for Bloomberg before I worked for the Washington Post. So that's like my crazy timeline in a, in a minute. Aside from that, aside from like cartography at work, I do map on mapping stuff on the sites like passion projects. I do the Dormy Dots uh, maps, and I am currently the vice president elect for the North American Cartographic Information Society. So shout out! You know, if you want to join us, please do. Um, and we also have our own conference, but that's another conversation. Um, I'm also, but I love all animals. So getting that out of the way why we map for news and how do we use OSM data. First is it's, it's the basic um, mapping use for us. So when breaking, breaking use events happen, we show the location of an event. So on this side, you can see when Bolsonaro, Bolsonaro's um, supporters reached government buildings. We were doing a live page on the Washington Post homepage. And my job was to write a short blurb about it and tell the people, where is this happening? Because some of the people who's watching the news are aware of you know, where in the world this is. But a lot of our readers aren't really exactly sure where it is. So OSM data is helpful for us in this case as our base map because it gives you the nitty gritty of things. It shows you the buildings, it has polygons, it has the streets. And honestly, if I had to build that from scratch, the news would have been done before I could create my own map. So that's why this is very vital for us. So like roads, alleys, and, and all that. Um, I have an example. Computer. <laughs> This is intimidating. Um, I was um, I was very confident with my computer. I'm trying to open this link, please. This I don't know where it opens. Oh, no, not no, perfect. Not perfect. <laughs> I know. I think they're um, they're supporting us anyway, right? So. Hey, OSM. While you're, while you're at, can you, can you douse those lights up there so we can actually see the screen? Just punch on. There go. All right. So this is a recent. That's fine. As long as we can see the screen, yeah. All right. So this is one of the most recent examples, and I need to sign in. Um, so if you lived in the DMV, the recent thing was suddenly we heard a boom and we weren't sure if we were being bombed or um, you know, are we gonna evacuate, are we gonna hide? But apparently there was a Cessna and um, my teammates used OpenStreetMap data to actually create the map. So what do we know, what is happening? So the first map that we had was very basic. What is the flight, what is the flight? path of this, what do we know? The map you're seeing now is actually the more refined version because at this point we knew the points of like where they were, where, where they were at a specific time. So this is a, this is us trying to tell our story using open street map, map data and like using it for a map. So flight rules, these are just like nice illustrations and then um, adding, layering more data to it. This is what we know. This, so special flight rules. So um, I'm not sure if everyone is aware, but you're not allowed to fly aircraft over DC. You have to go through Maryland and Virginia. And if you go through DC, the military will come after you, which happened this time. And the sonic boom happened because you know they were trying to chase the Cessna because it wasn't you know, an authorized air 
um, air flight area. So that's one way of the kind of the basic way for us, but a very important um, part of our storytelling. So locator maps. Um, the second one, oh my God. All right, the next is um, what happened, what is happening? So after telling our readers, this is what, this is the basic, it's happening and breaking. The next is analyze like what happened or is still happening. So for the Ukraine war, we've been mapping this for a very long time and our maps has evolved through time. And this is one of the harder um, mapping projects that, um, that our team has worked on. And I'm gonna click the link again. Awesome. So. This is um, this was published recently, so we know that the war has been happening for quite some time now. What we wanted to show was, and a lot of these maps are using OpenStreetMap base layers. That's why I, I, you know, trying to show them to you. So these are very basic. Um, the controlled areas are we have a source for it, so it's not OpenStreetMap. There, there's some. I forget what they're called at this moment, but it's in the source section, who sends us the updated shape files every day. Like, this is what we know. This is what's happening. Um, so it, it's tricky. Like, it changes every day. And at some point, we start we we updated the maps every day, but then it wasn't achievable because like things were just very hard on the ground. So this is our attempt to show um, that front line of where the war was happening, where Ukraine was advancing and Russia was advancing. Um, I didn't work on this, but my brilliant colleagues did. And this map has the OSM base. So you'll see some of um, the layers here. So it's very helpful for us to, to give the context of the area. Like a lot of us are seeing pictures, right? Google Maps, but, but here you'll see, this is the divide. This is where, you know, the Russians are, you'll see areas where people are, are and stuff like that. And if you read the story, it's being explained that way, but I'm not gonna go through it right now because it's just gonna be really, really long. So this is more of, it's still ongoing. So what is happening in Russia? And that's what my team tries to do you know, with, with these maps. Um, and then the next layer is a deeper dive into the details. So it's another Ukraine story. The deeper dive usually comes either after um, an event has, has happened. So we kind of have the data say a year after or six years after, or if it's climate change, maybe, I don't know, 15 years, whatever. Like we have this data now and we can analyze it. But for this one, we also have, um, this is for the flood in Ukraine. And after we did the, the locator, map that went out on the breaking news. So like, this is the dam, this is what happened. My colleagues um, created this map to tell our readers, okay, this is what it looks like on the ground and why is this important? So the, the challenge with this maps is there's so much layers that, and there's a lot of stories that you can tell on one map. So our job is to parse it out and say, if my reader looks at this for five minutes, what are they gonna get from it? Um, so all these layers you see are from OpenStreetMap and that detail is very important because now you see where the flower plant is, you know, all these like areas where the river goes and stuff. The Russian controlled areas are here too, but this is a di different source. It's that um, organization that helps us to keep track of what's happening on the ground. And again, on the surface, it's a very beautiful map, but it's also a really hard topic to discuss. But this is why it's important, because like we, we use the map to anchor the readers and tell them this is how it looks like on the ground. Um, so you see all these roads here, where the water goes, like all this detail we could not have if this was not an open street map base. Um, we'll get satellite images, that's okay. Um, and they give us details too, but then again with satellites, sometimes you'll get cloud cover, you'll get all these things that are you know, tricky and you can't really handle them. Um, based, but you can clear the cloud cover, but then again, it's not gonna be as clear as what we're trying to do with open street map data. So yeah, so that's like, kind of what we're using the maps for. And I think I wanted to 
like we can definitely build our own maps using that using natural earth data and other sources but i wanted to show you how important this you know the data that OpenStreetMap has that helps us in our reporting and you're seeing now just the final maps that we have but sometimes we verify as well if something's happening on the ground i go to openstreetmap.com and google at the same time and see like which one has this location because honestly there are there are villages in indonesia i was doing a i was doing an ev story recently that published and i'm not going to open the link um but i couldn't find the villages in google maps but they were in open street map so I, I was asking our reporters, can you give me the coordinates? And my, our reporters on the ground were like, we're trying to figure out what coordinates are. Um, so while that was happening, I, on my end, in the office, I was trying to like, where can I find this village with this local name that Google Maps is not showing me? It was in OpenStreetMap. So, so that's like very helpful in our reporting. Um, questions, suggestions, reactions. I'm trying to go very fast because I took so much time. Like.